What's good, family? What's good? What's good? It's your boy, Urban Sports Guru. I'm here. I want to give you my recap of the NFL playoffs, the divisional round. Break down what I saw in each game. And uh, these are... <laughs> First of all, happy MLK Day for everybody. Remember Martin Luther the King. And we had this day off because of him. God bless him, may God rest his soul. Now as far as the NFL playoffs, division around, let's start off with the first game. The first game I saw was Rams and Packers. That was the first game. That game came down to Aaron Rodgers as having complete and utter control of the offense. Complete and utter control. Complete and utter control where he was able to do what he wanted, when he wanted, and how he wanted to do it. The Rams didn't do anything to change course for him. They did nothing. They didn't get much pressure on him, which is something they do very well. Um, so unfortunately, Aaron Donald was hurt. He was injured. Everybody expected him to be okay, and I did too, but he couldn't. It is what it is. The man was injured. The Rams defense, they rely on that defense so much, they just couldn't get it done. They couldn't slow them down, and Aaron Rodgers has such utter commands. So even though uh, Jalen Ramsey had a decent game against Devontae Adams, it didn't matter. It just did not matter. Like, he has such command, even against the Rams defense that has a great, they're great against the pass. And the fact that they was able to, the Packers was able to get the run game going. They did what they wanted to do when they wanted to do it. Jerry Goff wasn't bad. I think there was a lack of trust from his coach. But they did run the football effectively. So maybe some lack of trust, but they were running the football even when they were down. They were doing it effectively, getting chunks of yardage. But ultimately, that game just came down to the fact that the Rams defense just could not slow down Aaron Rodgers. It's just that simple. Now the next game what we saw was the Ravens. The Ravens going to Buffalo. And unfortunately, Lamar Jackson got knocked out of the game. Buffalo wins the game 17-3. Now, I went into that game and I picked the Ravens because the way the Ravens could run the football. But, yes, Lamar Jackson got knocked out of the game and he did throw a crucial pick six. I come out of this game, I have to salute the Buffalo defense. I mean, they have studs all around. All around, if all around their defensive field, their first round picks and guys who are good free agents, <laughs> you know, Josh Norman's a former All Pro. He's like their third corner. <laughs> you know, they have Jadavius Wright, one of the top three corners in the league, and you know, and Ed, Edmonds and that middle linebacker, Ed Oliver, a former top ten pick. You know, Mario Addison, who balled in Carolina, he's balling over there. Murphy's a good, good pass rusher. They, they got. They got studs all over the field. They really do. They really, really do. But their run defense was an issue, and they stepped up. They stepped up. I mean, they stepped up. Josh Allen was effective. He didn't need to light it up, even though he played against a good buff, um, Baltimore Ravens defense. He didn't need to light it up. When it gets good secondary, so I didn't anticipate him lighting it up like that. But this game was about the Buffalo defense. Them being able to do the things they did, the fact that and them knocking out. Lamar Jackson. Moving forward, I think the Ravens, they have to do more to help Lamar Jackson. Their whole running game is predicated on Lamar Jackson. Let's call it what it is. Other teams, their running game is predicated on the quarterback turns. Their running game is, other teams, their running game is the quarterback's best friend. The Baltimore Ravens, their running game is the quarterback. And these other guys get off because of the running ability of the quarterback. So not only does the passing game and any plays that come out of there, He's counted on the quarterback, which is not much because they, they don't pass the ball effectively. <laughs> but their whole running game is predicated on the quarterback. Because you would think, okay, you take out, put the backup in, you could just run the football. No, this is not the way things go. Not with Baltimore because the threat of Lamar Jackson is what makes, you know, Ingram and Dobbins because of that running system that they have. And once Lamar Jackson got knocked out of the game, the game was over. The game was effectively over. I mean, Buffalo only scored 17, but basically they only, that's, that's really all they needed. 
pretty much that's all they needed. Uh, now Buffalo's going to be in the AFC Championship game, and I expect a great football game next week. Now, NFC, we had the Saints at Tampa. I picked, I picked the Saints to win this game, and something hit me. Something hit me in the first five minutes of watching this game. And the Saints early on was kicking ass. You was, you was watching this game, and you just thought the Saints was going to blow them the fuck out. But something hit me, and I was mad that I, it didn't. the light bulb didn't turn on sooner. So I could let y'all know. I picked the Saints, and I picked picked them because I I didn't think Tampa Bay's back back line can cover and I see the way Drew Brees was distributing the football spreading it around but then it hit me the Saints don't get big plays they do not get big plays and it's hurt them these last few years in the playoffs because Drew Brees is not really chucking it down the field they had to bring Jameis in so he could throw a deep ball and the Achilles heel for the Tampa Bay defense is they play a lot of man coverage. They're not going to play zone. They're going to play a lot of man coverage, which is what you need to do against the Saints. But and I guess other teams this burnt them because when they play man coverage, they don't do it well enough and they give up huge plays. They give up huge plays. If there's any team in the playoffs, you ain't got to worry about that. And the NFC that you don't have to worry about giving up big plays to, it's the New Orleans Saints. Why Drew Brees ain't chucking it over there? Michael Thomas ain't running by nobody. You got Emmanuel Sanders, but Drew Brees ain't chucking it that far. And that's where it hit me. That's what it hit me. This hit me like the first two drives. I'm watching them move, move solidly up the field, and I'm like, this is the same Saints offense, and it kills them in the playoffs because they can't get big plays. So in a way, their defense end up being tailor-made for the Saints offense. Able to get pressure up front. And you don't have to worry about them going over the top. Next week, that's going to be a fucking problem. But we'll get to that. Tom Brady is effective. They ran the ball effectively. They ran the ball, what, 30, 35 times? Which is what they needed. Which is what they needed. And they did a great job of weathering that initial storm when the Saints was up and should have been up 14 zip but instead they was only up six zip. they did a great job of weathering that initial storm going in the superdome weathering that initial storm and basically then they come down to score and they made it a football game then from there it was game on halftime it was 13 13 and it's one of those things kind of like in boxing how you got a fight that you look at you think is one side but then you look down the scorecards like what the fuck is this that's what that's what this game football game was the last game um so the tampa was very impressive last game uh the chiefs versus um cleveland and let also the fact that patrick mahomes got knocked out of the game uh no these running these quarterbacks it, it looks cute for a while it really looks cute you know because Jazz getting knocked out of the playoff game. You can't, you can't, you can't account for that. Then I see Kevin Stavisky a couple of times running power sweeps with Baker Mayfield. And then they run an option play. They've done a few times with Patrick Mahomes. Oh, Patrick Mahomes, that nigga. And he is that nigga. Let's call it what it is. But him being out the game, he gets knocked out. That, that, that's a free hit on the quarter. You understand there's five guys on the field who are paid to make sure this guy does not get hit. And you're running him away from these people. like, Especially someone who is as important to your football team. I mean, Chiefs Nation, Chiefs Kingdom can only hope and pray that he passes concussion protocol. I anticipate him doing it. But that he's just 100% and all the way there. Because he's going to need it next week against Buffalo. But moving forward, it was very unfortunate that fumble by Higgins. That was a great play by Sorensen. I don't want to hear no shit about helmet to helmet. This is football. Fuck that. Um, and the Chiefs defense stepped up when they needed to step up. They did. It's called a spade a spade. They stepped up when they needed to step up. Um, I think Cleveland has a lot to be proud of making this a football game. And I think, honestly, if when you look at the game, the Chiefs are up like 22 to... 
22 to 9, if I'm not mistaken. And they were driving. Patrick Mahomes doesn't get knocked out of the game. That game gets ugly. That game gets ugly. Real ugly. Grace Jones ugly. But, like, Bismarck Key ugly. I'm just saying. But, I'm saying the Chiefs, they just got so many fucking weapons. Like, Jesus fucking Christ, man. I mean, McCole Hartman is the second fastest player on that team. Just put that in perspective. The man runs 4-3 in his sleep, and he's the second fastest player on that team. I'm just saying. But uh, championship weekend, we got the Bucks. Bucks with Brady versus Aaron Rodgers, the MVP. Then we have two lightning offenses with hopefully a healthy Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen, the Buffalo Bills. Buckle your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> I look forward to next week. That's my take. Hit me in the comments. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. It's your boy over Sports Guru. I'm out. Salute.